Good morning. I'm Barbara and we are here today at the Cape Fear Botanical Garden with a really cool class called A World of Insects. We're going to learn about the parts of an insect, why insects are so important, and four different fun activities that you can do to learn about insects in your own home. And I am also here with our education specialist. of insects. We have a little poster there that's just a tiny fraction of some of the species of insects that are out there, some of the groups of insects that are out there. And insects are so, so important for our world. And there's three really big reasons that I can highlight today. There are just a few other reasons that insects are so important. And the first one is, with so many species of insects, they're a really important part of our food chain. Um, so you may hate mosquitoes, but for bats, they're a really important source of food. Um, insects can be a source of food for lizards, for toads, for frogs, all different kinds of animals. They can even be a source of food for people in a lot of countries where they're a cheap source of important protein that's used. So insects, really important part of the food chain. Number two, they're really important pollinators. One in every three bites of food you eat has been pollinated by a pollinator animal, and usually, that is a honeybee or a butterfly, usually bees and butterflies, and there are some kinds of beetles that do pollination. And insects are super important pollinators, so really important for that, for making our food grow as well as pollinating wildflowers so they grow. And then insects really help with decomposition. They help break down fallen leaves and trees and logs, and they return all the nutrients back into the soil so that new things can grow. So some really crucial things that insects do. But not every little critter that you see is actually an insect. So sometimes we call everything that's small, kind of we call them bugs. <laughs> um, little crawl, creepy crawlers. I've ordered uh, bags of plastic insects sometimes for kids' classes, and it'll even come with a bag in there. They'll just put whatever. But those aren't all insects. <laughs> actually, to be an insect, an animal has to have some very important specific parts. And so we have a little diagram up here. You can see all insects, they got three body parts, their head, their thorax in the middle with all the legs and stuff coming off of it, and then their abdomen on the bottom, storing a lot of fat and things in it. They have to have six legs exactly, and I bet some of you all already know that that makes spiders not an insect, because <laughs> they have too many legs, they have eight legs. And then insects, they have some cool stuff on their head going on there. They have compound eyes that look like they're looking through little window panes. I see one picture, but with lots of little parts. They have antenna, which kind of let them smell around the world, sense things from chemicals in the air. And they have mouth parts. And insects can have lots of different kinds of mouth parts. And I'm going to show you a way that you can actually act this out with me at home if you want to do the different kinds of mouth parts. So beetles and ants and insects like that, they have chewing mouth parts. That's like this. <laughs> That's chewy. Now, some insects, like mosquitoes, they have piercing mouth parts. That's like poking in with a little needle. Now, some insects, like butterflies, that are going to suck up nectar from a flower, they have, they have big straw all for baskets, and it's going to be like this, and you can unfurl it, stick it in that flower and suck up nectar, so that's cool. And then some insects, like a fly, have a kind of a big spongy thing that's sponging all over the food, and that's their mouth part. So 
all these different kinds of insects that can have lots of different kinds of mouth parts. And now I bet you might have noticed, some people might have noticed that there's a part that I didn't talk about yet. Don't insects have wings? They do. They usually have one or two pairs of wings. And almost all, not all, but almost all species of insects have wings in some form. But they don't always all have insects all the time. So sometimes only some ants in the colony or some termites in the colony have wings. And sometimes they only have wings um, at a certain point in their life cycle. So a caterpillar doesn't have wings, but a butterfly does have wings. So the wings are there, but maybe not all the time. Yeah, and uh, Leah is um, giving you a video there of the monarch butterfly life cycle stages. So you can see the legs and caterpillars, tiny caterpillars hatching out, the larger caterpillar, chrysalis, and the adult butterfly there. Insects have some really cool life cycles going on. Um, Elise, do you want to tell us about the parts of the spider? Sure. So as we mentioned earlier, a spider is not actually an insect. You'll notice its body looks a lot different. So um, you'll notice on its head, it doesn't really have antennae, right? It's got these, you've got fangs here. Those are like its mouth parts. So they're kind of similar in that regard. Um, the body is very different too. Instead of having that thorax and abdomen, you do have a head and a thorax and an abdomen, but they also have a little extra parts of the spinneret at the bottom here. Um, and this is the most important, this is the most, um, the biggest difference people think of when they think of a spider is actually in its legs, right? So rather than six, you have eight legs, and that's a pretty easy way. And you'll notice also the size of the abdomen is quite large. That's usually true for most spider species. Yeah. And it's really cool to also notice they have that cool extra part, their pity pops, which yeah. are kind of like some extra little mini hands that kind of help them grab the food into it. Right up there. Yeah. And spiders do not have weight. True. So that would be <laughs> And so that's another thing that we have to show you today is that we have some actual real specimens of insects. Um, and so the first two are um, from a praying mantis. So that right there is the praying mantis egg case. And then we also have a preserved uh, praying mantis. Um, something a lot of people may not know is that most of the praying mantises that you would see here are actually um, invasive or non-native species, really. Um, they are originally from China or Europe. And they're really cool, well-adapted predators. Those front legs that look kind of like arms are actually legs. They count for that six legs that they have. Um, I do think our uh, preserved specimen has had a little breakage, and so some of the legs are, it may not look like it has six in the video. Um, and you can watch some really cool videos on YouTube and things of praying mantises actually taking down a hummingbird to eat. So they are a pretty ferocious predator there. Um, then we have a preserved butterfly. What you can see is on the specimen, if you get really close up to look at a butterfly, and don't do this on a live butterfly, you don't ever hurt their wings, is they have tiny, tiny little scales on those wings that actually gives that wing some of the shine. And they have the antenna, and butterflies have nice, thin, kind of very thin club antenna, whereas a moth would have feathery looking antenna. And I think that butterfly, if you turn it over, it's gonna have some really cool, yeah, really designs on the bottom there. They almost look like eyes, those little spots. And those are actually really handy for the butterfly to not only blend in because of the brown color, but also to look larger than it is and maybe scare off some predators if they think it's maybe a bird or a bigger bug. So that's really cool there too. And you can see behind that, um, we actually have a chrysalis and a cocoon. And so that's another difference between um, a moth would build a big fuzzy cocoon and a butterfly would make a chrysalis, which is that other thinner one in there. And go ahead and chime in online if you get any questions for us. Um, we'd love to have live questions. If you watch this video later, we'd also love to have not live questions. <laughs> uh, we're uh, happy to talk to people. So um, and there you can see a dragonfly. They're also a really cool insect predator that we have. Um, and one of the things that's neat about them is they have a really interesting life cycle. They live part of their life in the water. Um, and so we actually have some of the exoskeleton of insects that have hatched. So insects don't have bones like us. They have a hard shell on the outside. It's called an exo or 
outside skeleton. This, instead of the skeleton inside, it's on the outside. And that baby dragonflies in that box there, the dragonfly nymphs, actually they emerged out of their exoskeleton and they're gonna live in a bigger one. When they grow, they sometimes grow out of that shell and they have to get a bigger shell. So they'll leave that old shell shed and so we have a chance to see it. There's actually a special word for that process and feel free to chime in if you know the word for that shedding process. <laughs> and over there, the last one we have is a cicada. You may see the leftover exoskeletons of these sometimes stuck on trees and things. They're a really cool insect because actually most of their life cycle is invisible to us. They hide under the ground for two to 17 years, sometimes emerging out from under the ground only after 17 years of being under the ground. Now when I was a kid, I was always taught that they were sleeping, they were sort of hibernating, dormant. But actually I've learned now that science today suggests that what they're actually doing is they do move around and burrow under the ground. They just don't emerge where we can see them for sometimes up to 17 years. So that's really awesome. Do we have any questions? Uh, no questions at the moment, but you do have uh, somebody saying hello. George says hi. Hi, George. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Well then, I guess we will move on to some really cool insect activities that we have to show you today that you can actually do at home. And Elise has our first one over there. Yeah. So this is our buzzing bee craft. Um, bees are one of our most important pollinators, so you actually can make this really fun craft. And just a quick note, this is also in our activity guide, that 200 plus ways to explore nature that's online. So you can definitely um, look it up in there if you download it. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna need an index card. Um, this one we actually cut in half to make it this size. Uh, then we decorated that index card to make it look like a bee, so we put some stripes on there with marker. And then we taped that index card to a popsicle stick, so that's right here. And then we put these little pencil erasers on each side of our popsicle stick. And then we tie a string, pretty long string, um, about two feet maybe. It's because you're gonna need it because you're gonna swing it later. You're gonna need it to be pretty long. You tie that around one end of our buzzing bee craft, and then finally, our final step is we put this rubber band around our, our erasers. And then, to make it buzz, we're gonna hold it, um, let's see, maybe about a foot from our bee, and you're gonna swing it in a circle, but you're gonna wanna do it vertically, so it's a vertical circle going up and down, okay? You're also gonna buzz, right? So let's see if we can get it. You guys hear that? And be careful when you do this so you don't, you know, hit anyone with it. Or yourself, because you could do that too. But yeah, so it makes that buzzing sound like a bee, which is actually caused by their wings. When their wings move really fast, it makes that buzzing sound. So that's really cool. And again, that's in our guide too, if you want to look that up um, on the online guide. But yeah, it's our buzzing bee activity. Pretty cool. And I'll take us over here for our next activity, which is some insect athlete challenges you can actually try at home and see how you compare athletically to an insect. <laughs> a lot of insects are very small, but they can have some really amazing abilities for their size. And so the first one we have on here is dung beetles. Not something we think about as a real athletic animal, but actually they have to push a ball of dung that's bigger than themselves, sometimes for miles at a time at night, and they actually have to use their back legs to do that. So while they're crawling around kind of with their head down and their back legs pushing this ball for miles at night, and they actually have to move in a straight direction while navigating around trees and things. So that can be pretty hard. And you can actually test this yourself. If you have a bandana or something, you can tie in a little blindfold. Um, and if not, you just squeeze your eyes shut real tight. Make sure someone else is watching you so you don't walk into anything. And you try and walk straight as you can without looking. And you'll see. Sometimes it can be hard, you can kind of accidentally go <laughs> off track and end up a little on the side. So, helps us appreciate what, how amazing that is that they do that. Now, fleas are these teeny tiny animals, but they actually can jump 150 times their height. So, you can see how high you can jump. <laughs> <laughs> and if the average seven year old, so someone with the average seven year old height, could jump 150 times their height, that would be halfway up the Empire City building. Wow. 
um, we're talking superhuman level of power there. Yeah. Um, and then we have a super fast insect. The Australian tiger beetle is the fastest insect. And they can run 2.5 meters a second, wow. which is, I'll remember that's only a little bit about five miles an hour if you're, um, for their size, that would be kind of slow for a human, but they're so small that if a human was as fast per their body size as the beetle, it would be 480 miles an hour, which is way faster than even cars go. So, um, and then our last one on here is an ant. So ants are super strong. They can carry a hundred times their body weight. When you do a push-up, you carry about half of your body weight. You lift up about half. So you can see how many times you can lift even just one half of your body weight. And I'll do one so y'all can see. You wanna just put your hands about shoulder width, and keep your back and lift. There you go. <laughs> so those are some really fun. You can challenge yourself to jump, to run, to try some push-ups, and to walk straight without seeing. Let's see how you compare up to our insect athletes. And our next activity is a little model of cross-pollination. So pollination is when insects, insect animals, move the pollen from one flower to another and helps new flowers grow. So let's pretend that these two are different flowers of the same so those could both be um, different azalea flowers, some kind of flower. And I'm here, I'm going to be a bee. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take my little cotton ball here um, over, and I'm going to pick up some nectar from this first flower. And while I'm getting that one, sucking up some nectar with my straw tongue, I'm going to get some nice purple chalk powder on there and then I'm going to go to the next flower and I'm going to pick up some of that too and I'm going to carry it back over here and shake some back into my hive and then I'm going to go back and I'm going to do the same thing and over time you're going to start to see that over here what you're collecting is a mix of the two colors and that's what cross-pollination is. It's the mixing of uh, pollen from different flowers which helps bring some diversity into plants. They don't always want to be exactly the same. They want a mixing from different individuals of the species so that the new plants will have that DNA from multiple individuals. And if you want to make this activity at home, what you can actually do is take some chalk, put it in a bag, sidewalk chalk works well, um, like a plastic Ziploc bag that it's in, and just tap it kind of firmly, but not too, don't have, doesn't take too much power, um, just to create that chalk powder to use. And you can even do more than two colors. You could add blue. Um, I think for a camp once we had a couple of colors, maybe four colors, and we had a couple of kids racing and doing that was really fun. So you can really um, kind of make variations on this game. It's a lot of fun to do outside too. And then our last activity is, of course, to look for insects. And there is, in our book, 200 Plus Ways to Explore in Your Home and Backyard, a really cool bug hunt sheet that you can actually print out if you want to record some of your finds. Um, I actually went outside in the garden here looking for insects this morning, but I didn't find a huge amount of interesting things. It's pretty chilly today. Um, but what I do have, just a few things for us to see. There we go take this guy out. I did find another invertebrate, so another animal without a backbone, this snail, and you can see the eye stalks coming back out as our snail gets less afraid. We got a cool, uh, that's one type of invertebrate, not an insect, but an invertebrate that you might find. Um, and a couple of tips is to look under logs and rocks for different kinds of insects, as well as if you have a white sheet, something like this, you can lay it out on the ground under a tree and you can shake a tree branch over it, just kind of gently but firmly enough not to damage the tree, but firmly things can fall out of the tree. And so if there's any little insects in there, a lot of times you'll see them on the sheet. Um, and the last tip is you can look around lights at night. So if you have a porch light or something, if you turn it on, you can look around lights at night. You can see moths and a lot of other little, sometimes beetles, other little insects that will come to those lights at night. So 
Those are some really cool ways. Be careful when you're handling insects. Um, don't handle little spiders, ants, or really anything you're not too sure about. Um, and you'll see some more tips for that in our book too. And that is it for today. Join us next week, also on Wednesday, also at 11, for a river hike exploration tour. All right. Thanks. Bye. Bye.